Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a uh, site inside of Dreamweaver. I have Dreamweaver CS 5.5 here. It's a pretty common thing to do, especially when you want to organize your pictures, your files, folders, things like that. And as you can see here, um, I have a site set up already um, for a client that I did. Uh, you can see all the different folders in green here, and then you can see all the different page files that I have here. Uh, with Dreamweaver, it's pretty easy to set up a site so that you can uh, easily manage and organize your files and pictures and things like that, your scripts, JavaScript, all that fun stuff so that you guys can keep it all in one central location. So what you need to do is you need to come up here to site when you first start and you can click new site. Okay, and now uh, we have our unnamed site. Alright, we want to name it so we're going to call this YouTube. Alright, and it's just going to be our test site. And then we have our local site folder. Now, as you can see here, it defaults to my uh, server location that I have uh, installed here on my computer. As you can see, I have WAMP installed. Um, but we don't want it to go to unnamed site 2 because we really don't want it to be um, in that folder. We want to create a new folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and uh, we're going to create a new site. So we're going to come up and uh, come out of that unnamed site 2 and we're going to go into www okay and we're gonna create a new folder called YouTube we're gonna click uh, enter and then open and select now you can see here we have it now saved in WAMP www.youtube um, if you want to you can just type it in directly it'll say this folder is not created do you want to create a new folder say yes okay and then quickly we'll set up a server if you don't know how to do this I did show you guys in another video um, and I'll put it in the link for you guys to watch on how to set up a server inside of Dreamweaver but uh, I'm just going to fly through this real quick here. Okay. All right. Select. Post. Okay. All right. And we'll name our server Camille. Alright, so we want it for testing. Click Save. Okay, so you can see here we now have a new site created called YouTube, and uh, we can uh, immediately start creating the pages that we need to in order to get the site up and running. I'm going to create a quick PHP page just to show you guys. Alright, and I hate doing all this, but. Alright. Okay, so we've laid out our site uh, here. Do a quick save, call it index. Now it's going to automatically save to our YouTube folder because we did create the site. Click save. And you can see here that our page called index.php pops up. And now these are our pages, and we can easily create new folders inside of these um, website or these site folders that we've created. To do so, uh, simply make sure you have the uh, top site folder selected. And then right click, new file, a new folder. We want a new folder. So we're going to call this new folder, maybe uh, IMG for images. We can create a new, uh, make sure we got that selected, new folder. Uh, call it scripts. You know, whatever you want to do. Um, just to show you guys real quick, if you do uh, have something like this selected, another folder, and you right click, new folder, it's going to create a folder within that folder, which is not what we want to do. All right. We want to keep everything in our root um, of our website that we're creating, so it needs to stay in the root folder. That way it's easily accessible, um, especially when you're referencing files and images inside of your pages. You don't want to have to sit there and type in um, something like this, which would really suck. Um, so say we're in our root, and we have an image, and our source would be, oh, let's see here, IMG, and then maybe you had another folder on accident um, that you created. Um, like scripts, for whatever reason, say you just accidentally had IMG and you never changed it, never paid attention to it, um, and accidentally left that folder inside of the image folder. Now you got to type this and then the image name, image name .jpg, or something like that. Um, so it's always best to make sure you have your site um, folder up here highlighted when you right click to create a new site. 
Um, you can create multiple folders inside of each other, as I showed you with the scripts. So say um, your scripts has PHP and JavaScript files in there. If you want to create a um, PHP folder, maybe a JavaScript folder. All right, and as you can see here, I made a rookie mistake. Um, I had the PHP folder highlighted when I created that new folder, therefore it created the JavaScript folder inside of that PHP folder, which is not what we want to do. So we want to make sure we have our scripts folder highlighted, then create a new folder called JavaScript. Okay, and uh, you got to be really careful about that or you're going to uh, mess, up, mess up your layout there pretty bad. So now you know you can reference in here, um, say in your head, here you wanted to create a um, link. Uh, we don't have to put the types anymore now that it's HTML5 so we can do rel. Um, we can do a style sheet and uh, then we can just do the ref and uh, find what we need to. But if we were to do this we would have to reference inside of our scripts folder first then we would have to reference into PH PHP or JavaScript um, I do advise you keep your folders lowercase. Uh, it's just easier to work with in the long run, especially with larger sites. Um, let me go back. Uh, also, um, you can click this drop down menu to see all your different websites that you have set up. But let me just show you real quick here what I'm talking about when I'm referring to keeping things lowercase. Uh, as you can see, most of my folders here are all lowercase. All my um, files that I've created are lowercase. Um, even my images folder, I try to keep things lowercase if possible. My includes are all lowercase. Uh, I mean, style sheets are lowercase. So it's just easier convention to work with, especially when you're building a website that's as large as this one. Um, I'm, you can see I have tons of pages that I've had to create um, by hand here. and. Uh, you need to make sure that you keep everything easy to remember and easy to update in the future. So I just wanted to show you guys that really quick. Uh, with HTML5, like I said before, you don't have to put the type in like we used to have to before. We used to have to put the type in as text slash CSS or text slash JavaScript. Uh, it automatically knows now, so that's pretty nice. So we don't have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, that's how you set up a site in uh, Dreamweaver. You just basically can bounce around from the different ones, go up to the site, create a new site, um, set up your testing server if you're running uh, PHP or anything like that. If you're just running straight HTML pages, you don't have to worry about that. You can simply just uh, leave the server part blank and easily open up your web pages. If you wanted to open up a specific page, you could right-click on it, preview in browser, come down here. Um, I have Firefox set to F12. Um, most installations will be set that way as well. You have your Internet Explorer, and then Device Central, and Adobe Browser Lab. Uh, Adobe Browser Lab basically lets you try different browsers. Um, I don't use it. I just use Firefox, and if I need to test it in another browser, I'll open it manually because it's just easier for me to uh, keep things controlled that way. And as you can see here, I'm a neat freak when it comes to laying things out and spacing them and, and things like that. I guess that's the programming side of me with uh, Python having white space to uh, make everything look nice and neat and pretty. So anyways, I hope uh, this helps you guys out quite a bit and allows you to uh, see how to set up a site in Dreamweaver because it will make your life so much easier, especially when you're able to uh, quickly navigate between the different um, pages and folders and things that you need to open up and edit and, and change and things like that. You also have a refresh button here. You can connect to a remote host. Um, if you look here with my JMK9 services uh, one, I can actually connect to a remote server um, and view the files that are on the actual uh, web host, which would be my hosting account because um, I'm hosting this client's website under my account. So this allows me to see what files I have locally and what files I have remotely. And if there's any changes that need to be made, you can quickly uh, update with the get and put functions here to uh, put files and get files uh, from the server locally and remotely. Um, back and forth is pretty synonymous. And it will allow you to easily um, integrate the FTP with Dreamweaver that everybody loves uh, because it really does make a difference without having to come down and open up uh, FileZilla or anything like that because that's kind of a pain in the butt to have to do every time. Dreamweaver does at least give you the option to have an FTP client built right in 
to allow you to upload your files directly as soon as you save them to the server, which is great, especially when you're updating because it makes it a lot faster. So I hope this helped you guys. Um, I hope you're able to organize things a little better now. Um, now that you know how to set up a site, I know it took me a little while to figure out when I first started with Dreamweaver because I wasn't familiar with the program. So take care, guys. If you have any comments, just put them below and I'll answer them as best as I can.